The film begins by depicting the atmosphere at Suzurin, a Japanese high school for boys where there was never a teacher teaching. The students did whatever they wanted, such as fighting and causing chaos at school, and were not bound by any rules. Jinji Takia, a new student at Suzurin High School, stands in front of the school gate. Jinji is the son of the region's most powerful Yakuza boss. He appears to be changing the name of a student who is regarded as the most powerful student at Suzurin High School to his own. This indicates that he has lofty goals of conquering all of the students at Suzurin High and becoming the sole ruler of the school. The scene then shifts to the start of the new school year in the Suzurin High School Hall, where several teachers and new students are gathered. However, the event quickly devolves into chaos when a new student makes a fuss, infuriating another new student, a young man named Hiromi Kurashima, who openly challenges the new student to a fight. Chaos ensued in an instant, and clashes were unavoidable until, in the end, the students were taken aback by the appearance of Yakuza members who came to their school to exact revenge on a Suzurin high school student named Sarazawa Tamao. Ken Katajiri, representing the Yakuza, stated that Sarazawa had beaten one of their members to a pulp, requiring intensive hospital treatment. Ken, on the other hand, is thought to lack charisma and cannot portray the image of a Yakuza who is known to be violent and cruel, so he is asked to step back and buy drinks for his friends. In contrast, the other Yakuza members attempt to locate Sarazawa at the school. Meanwhile, Sarazawa arrives at the hospital to pick up his best friend, a young man named Tokio Tatsukawa, who recently underwent treatment after being diagnosed with a cerebral aneurysm that necessitated surgery. Tokio appears to be in good health in front of Sarazawa, allowing his best friend to relax. However, Sarazawa has learned of Tokio's medical condition, which necessitates immediate surgery to save his life. Sarazawa borrows Tokio's motorcycle on his way back to school, despite the fact that he is not very good at riding a motorcycle. As a result, Sarazawa crashes the car and engages in a chase with a police officer, Yoshinobu, who is looking for him for the violence he committed that resulted in a Yakuza member being rushed to the hospital in critical condition. However, Sarazawa managed to elude the cops and caused the car Yoshinobu was driving to overturn, injuring him in the head. Meanwhile, at Suzurin High School, the Yakuza are unable to locate Sarazawa and instead confront Genji, who easily defeats the Yakuza. When Sarazawa arrives at school, he appears surprised to learn that Genji has defeated the Yakuza who came to their school to exact revenge on him. However, not long after, Yoshinobu arrived with the other policemen and immediately arrested Sarazawa, which made Genji realize that he was not a random person and was, in fact, the strongest student at Suzurin High, so Genji became more determined to beat him. That night, Genji visits a nightclub and meets Aizawa Ruka, an R&B singer and his crush. He wasn't a big fan of fighting. However, he aspires to follow in his father's footsteps and become a Yakuza boss. Jinji then sees his father, Hideo Takia, a Yakuza boss. He declares his desire to conquer Suzurin, a feat Hideo attempted but failed at in his youth. Jinji makes Hideo promise to recognize him as his heir if he succeeds. The next day, while Sarazawa and his friends were relaxing on the school roof, Jinji appeared and immediately challenged him to a fight. Tokio, Jinji's best friend since junior high, intervened immediately to stop Jinji and Sarazawa from fighting. Tokio then tells Genji that he must first defeat the other class's delinquent students and defeat Rindamon, a legendary fighter at the school who is said to be capable of overthrowing 50 people at once with his own hands. When Genji inquired about Rindamon, the other students stated that he was a terrible monster in human form that Genji could not defeat. When Genji finally met Rindamon, a tall and burly young man, he realized he was not his match for the time being, so he decided to prepare himself first before fighting him. Following that, Genji meets Ken, who believes he is Sarazawa. When Ken tries to fight back, Genji can easily knock him out with a single light punch, making him feel guilty about Ken's apparent weakness. Ken and Genji finally choose to be friends after resolving their misunderstanding. They then go to a nightclub, where Genji expresses his desire to rule Suzurin High and Ken gladly offers to assist him. Genji, acting on Ken's advice, challenges and defeats other delinquent students at Suzurin High School, beginning with his own class. He defeats the strongest student in his class, a young man named Chata Tamura. Chata finally agrees to join Genji and describes the power structure at Suzurin High School as well as the well-known student gangs both inside and outside the school. One of them is the Front of Armament, a biker gang led by Bando Hidito, a second-year student. 
He prefers to rule the streets and is uninterested in ruling Suzuran High School, so Genji doesn't have to worry about him and his gang. Aside from them, there are delinquent students known as the Ebizuka Trio, which is led by a first-year student named Hiromi Kurashima and includes two formidable members. Chud explains that Genji does not need to fight Rindamon because he is on another level and has no interest in the fights between Suzuran High students. It's not the case with Serizawa Tamao, who is currently the highest authority because he was able to subdue the delinquent students and establish a faction called the Serizawa Army to rule the school. Tokaji Yuji, the Serizawa Army's mastermind, is one of the Serizawa Army's many formidable members. Shuji Satsumoto is a judo martial arts expert. And the Mikami brothers, who have recently joined the Serizawa Army, as well as Tokio, Serizawa's best friend. Chada then mentions a young man named Makiz Takashi, who is frequently defeated by Serizawa but is hesitant to join him. After Chada reveals Makiz's weakness for women, Genji approaches Ruka and invites her to a nightclub with her female friends. She immediately agreed to Genji's request, with no hesitation. After that, Genji met Makiz and invited him to the Love Love Group Blind Date event. Makiz arrives at a nightclub dressed elegantly in the evening to attract the women who attend the event. However, he is unable to control himself when dealing with women, and he immediately thwarts Genji and Ken's plans, so Ken orders Chada to carry out Plan B, in which Chada will act as a troublemaker and annoy the women. Just as Makiz was about to defend the girls from Chada and play the hero, Ruka stood up and stabbed a fork into Chada's face, effectively ending everything. Ruka becomes enraged and disappointed in Genji after learning of his true intentions, and rushes away. Genji becomes so frustrated that he bursts into tears when Ruka gets angry at him, so Ken tries to console him. Makiz was moved when he realized Genji was doing all of this for him and decided to join Genji in defeating Serizawa and his henchmen. Following that, Genji challenges a young man named Izaki Shun, who deceives Genji and forces him to fight alone against him and his henchmen. Izaki was impressed by Genji's unyielding spirit in the fight to the last drop of blood and decided to join him after seeing him struggle to get up despite being badly beaten. Genji then formed his own group, Genji Perfect Seiya, or GPS for short, with Chella, Makiz, and Izaki. Which made Ken very happy because Ken couldn't help him achieve his dream of becoming a ruler at Suzuran High School when he was one of Suzuran's students. Serizawa, on the other hand, is concerned about Genji's rapid rise to power in Suzuran but takes no action. Tokaji Yuji, one of Serizawa's lieutenants, is not so ambiguous and begins covertly attacking GPS members, beginning with Izaki. When Tokaji and his henchmen found Izaki alone, they surrounded him and severely beaten him, forcing him to be rushed to the hospital for intensive treatment. Knowing that one of his members has been injured, Genji becomes enraged and beats up anyone who gets in his way of achieving his goals, attacking indiscriminately in order to gather enough henchmen to fight Serizawa and his army. Tokaji not only injures Izaki and batters Chutta, but he also approaches Bando Hidito, the leader of the The Front of Armament biker gang, with a plan to kidnap Ruka and further aggravate Genji. Tokaji offers Bando some of his henchmen in exchange for kidnapping Ruka and bringing her to him. He does not, however, inform Bando that Genji is in love with Ruka. Bando agreed to Tokaji's request after being enticed by his offer. Meanwhile, Ken meets his boss, Yuzaki Joji, a Yakuza boss who happens to be a rival of Genji's father, Hideo Takia. Yuzaki learns of Ken and Genji's friendship and orders Ken to kill him, despite the fact that doing so will spark a war between the Yakuza organizations. The task proves too much for Ken, who has grown fond of Genji and begins to regret becoming a Yakuza in the first place. Because Ken finally decided to save Genji, he decided to meet with Genji's father and provide information about Yazaki's assassination plot against Genji. He then hurried away, leaving a letter for Genji to Hideo. Meanwhile, Bando and his gang managed to kidnap Ruka and bring her to Tokaji. Genji receives a phone call from Ruka, who informs him that she is being held hostage by men wearing skulls on their jackets and that her captors have mentioned the name Bando. Genji gathers the GPS and proceeds to the biker gang's headquarters, suspecting that her captors are the armament. A fight between the GPS and the armament is unavoidable, with Genji furious because Bando has kidnapped his girl. Bando and Genji realize that Tokaji had been playing against them for the benefit of Tokaji and the Serizawa army when Bando finally explained that he didn't know anything about Ruka, who turned out to be Genji's crush. Bando, on the other hand, demands vengeance and asks Makiz to cut off one of his ears as an apology for Genji and his henchmen battering the armament. Hearing this, Genji immediately offered to serve a sentence because he was the GPS's leader and was accountable for all of his actions. 
However, when Jinji was about to cut off his ear, Bando immediately stopped him and appreciated his goodwill before finally leaving with his henchmen. Jinji and his gang then traveled to the Serizawa army base camp in order to free Ruka. When Serizawa arrives, he immediately beats Tokaji for acting without his knowledge and believes his actions are wrong because they involve an innocent person like Ruka. Jinji and Serizawa then agree to schedule the fight for 5 o'clock in the afternoon the following day to coincide with Tokio's surgery at the hospital. That night, Jinji ran into his father, who handed him a letter from Ken. Jinji and the GPS are ready to take on Serizawa and his army the next day. Tokio, on the other hand, was ready for his surgery and bravely walked into the operating room without being escorted by the medical team. Jinji and the GPS arrive at the grounds of Suzurin High School, where Serizawa and his army await them. It was unavoidable for Jinji Perfect Seiya and the Serizawa army to clash. Both teams used all of their strength to defeat the other. Jinji and his henchmen appear overwhelmed because the Serizawa army has far more members than Jinji Perfect Seiya. When Jinji and his gang were being pressed, Bando and his biker gang, who had come to help Jinji, appeared. Because Bando was irritated that Tokaji had incited him and caused several of his men to be beaten in an unnecessary fight. The fight reoccurs in his balance when Bando and his gang join forces with Genji and the GPS, where fighting continues until only Genji and Serizawa remain. When the others have fallen, they can still stand and fight one-on-one. -on -one. They engaged in a fierce duel, and both of them had a tough physique and strength that outmatched the other students at Suzurin High School. However, Serizawa fell and was unable to get back up, so he decided to admit defeat to Genji Takia. Meanwhile, Ken is seen at a dock with his boss, Ryazaki removes his coat and asks Ken to put it on before firing a few shots at him for refusing to do his bidding and preferring to save Genji. Ken eventually fell into the water and assumed he was dead. However, he survived because Yazaki's suit was bulletproof and his execution was a ruse to allow him to leave the organization and live a different life. Ken cried happily when he realized he was still alive and that his boss had the decency to let him live. Meanwhile, Serizawa receives word from the hospital that Tokio's operation was a success. Several days later, Genji challenges Rindamon once more, the final hurdle in his path to ruling Suzurin. Rindamon believes that Suzurin will never truly be conquered and that there will always be someone left to fight. The film concludes with the start of the battle between Genji and Rindamon. The second season begins eight months after Genji Takia's victory over Serizawa Tamao. However, Genji continues to struggle for supremacy at Suzurin High School. Jinji is secretly desperate after a crushing defeat at the hands of the legendary Rindamon and on the verge of graduating without achieving his goals. He began to challenge Rindamon to fight regularly, but consistently, he always failed to beat him, who was famous for being able to defeat 50 people at once alone. Jinji continues to challenge Rindamon to a fight because he is determined to defeat him and force all of the students at Suzurin High School to submit to him and join his group, Jinji Perfect Seiya. But Rindamon appeared to be a difficult opponent for Genji to defeat, so he became frustrated. The scene then shifts to a young man named Kawashi, who has just been released from juvenile prison after spending two years there for a murder he committed while fighting with House and Academy's delinquent students. Kawashi immediately visited the grave of the person he had killed after being released from prison. When he arrived, however, he encountered a group of rogue House and Academy students who were visiting the graves of their fallen friends. When they see Kawashi, they decide to avenge their friend's death. Kawashi fled as quickly as he could, eventually arriving at the Serizawa army base camp, and asked Serizawa for protection as the leader because Suzurin High School and Housen Academy had agreed to form a peace treaty to avoid feuds in the area. Housen Academy representatives demand that Serizawa hand over Kawashi so they can take revenge, but he refuses so that the Housen Academy students feel angry and insult them. Hearing the uproar, Genji, the self-proclaimed ruler of Suzurin High, refused to accept the insults hurled by the House and Academy students. Genji immediately beat up the student representatives of House and Academy, effectively cancelling the peace agreement between Suzurin High and House and Academy, and the feud between the two schools became unavoidable. The scene then shifts to a young man named Taiga Narumi, who is the ruler of House and Academy's delinquent students and is famous for having the strength of 15 adults. When Taiga and his delinquent students were planning their attack on Suzurin High, a young man named Gawashio, a former Suzurin High School student who decided to leave after being defeated by Serizawa, volunteered to help House and Academy attack Suzurin High because he wanted revenge on Serizawa and despised Suzurin High. 
House and Academy appears to have not only Taiga as one of its most powerful students, but also a very talented martial arts student named Ryo. Although Ryo, like the other delinquent students, has a very unconvincing appearance, with a thin body and long hair that flows smoothly, Taiga has great respect for him because of his terrible strength. Even he instructed him to use all of his strength when facing Suzurin Hai. Meanwhile, at Suzurin Hai, Jinji is seen discussing his plans to face House and Academy with Serizawa. However, Serizawa appears hesitant to fight because he believes Genji started the feud between them and that he must resolve it himself. Serizawa didn't appear to want to intervene and chose to remain neutral because the peace treaty that Suzurin High School and House and Academy had made long before they started school there, for obvious reasons, couldn't be ignored. Taiga appears to be preparing for the upcoming battle elsewhere. Soon after, a young man named Tatsuya arrived, having heard that House and Academy was going to fight Suzurin High. Tatsuya believes that House and Academy under Taiga's leadership is insufficient, and he is skeptical that House and Academy will be able to defeat Suzurin High. Not only that, but the feud was unable to resurrect his brother, who was killed several years ago due to a school feud. Hearing that, Taiga seemed annoyed because he felt belittled by Tatsuya, who was none other than his junior. Meanwhile, Kawishi is seen meeting Ken, an old friend from his Suzurin days. Ken, who has decided not to be a Yakuza because of his involvement with Genji, advises Kawashi to start a new, better life away from the gangster world. However, after witnessing Ken's dire situation, Kawashi decides not to end up like him and applies for a job with a respected Yakuza boss in town. The following day, Makiz and Chana, two Suzurin high school students and members of Genji Perfect Seiya, tour the school in order to recruit students to fight house and academy. Genji, on the other hand, is welcoming two new members to his group, the Mikami brothers, who were previously members of the Serizawa army but decided to join Genji because Serizawa refused to join the fight. Meanwhile, House and Academy delinquent students are seen planning an initial attack to weaken Suzurin High's power so that they can win. They then proceeded to incapacitate the Serizawa army members one by one, beginning with the most powerful member, Shuji, who is skilled in judo martial arts. Shuji appeared to be overwhelmed by Ryo, and in the end, he was defeated by Ryo and was hospitalized for two months. Following that, they attacked Tokaji, the mastermind of all Serizawa army attacks, and beat him to a pulp. The same thing happened to Serizawa's subordinates and members of Genji Perfect Seiya. Makiz, Chana, and the Mikami brothers had to deal with Gata, who used a knife fraudulently. But then, Taiga came and immediately stopped Gata because the cheating was very contrary to House and Academy's steadfast principles, which always put sportsmanship first. The following day, Genji is seen discussing an attack strategy with a GPS member named Izaki, who warns him not to act too quickly. Because, with the number of troops he currently has, he is unlikely to win the battle against House and Academy, especially since Makiz and Shada are currently injured. Izaki then approaches Serizawa and challenges him to a fight, stating that if he wins, Serizawa and his men must join Genji's army to fight House and Academy. He couldn't, of course, defeat Serizawa. Kawashi, on the other hand, was seen meeting with Joji Izaki, a Yakuza boss who was Ken's former boss, to ask to join the Yakuza group led by him. Yazaki then orders Kawanishi to assassinate his rival Yakuza boss, who happens to be Genji's father, Hideo Takiya. Kawashi agreed immediately and dashed off to carry out his orders. In the evening, Genji goes to his father's bar to relax. But then his father summoned him because he needed to speak privately with his son. Hideo inquires about Genji's academic performance. Hideo could easily knock Genji down and advise him not to act hastily in dealing with things because he was drunk. Genji then left the bar to go smoke. But he misplaced the lighter. A young man approached Genji and offered to light the cigarette he was going to smoke. The young man was Taiga, and because they didn't know each other and were rivals, Genji and Taiga acted normally. Meanwhile, Hideo was walking down a deserted street with one of his men when he was attacked by Kawashi, who shot him. Genji immediately went to his father, who was in the hospital receiving treatment, and asked his men not to be careless and to raise awareness of his father's safety. The attack on Hideo Takiya was widely publicized because he was the city's most powerful and respected Yakuza boss. Ken, who was aware of this, immediately suspected that the attack on Hideo was carried out by Kawashi in order for him to join the Yakuza group led by Yazaki. The next day, Genji challenges Rindamon to another fight. Even though he could land several punches and parry Rindamon's attacks, he still couldn't beat him. That night, God decides to burn down Suzurin High School, and because his actions violate the principles of House and Academy, he is severely beaten by Taiga and his henchmen. To determine the time of the battle, Genji and his henchmen meet with the delinquent students of House and Academy led by Taiga. 
When Jinji and his henchmen were about to leave, Jinji abruptly turned around and approached Taiga, prompting Taiga's men to rush forward, expecting Jinji to attack him. Jinji had only wanted to light a cigarette for Taiga after paying off his debt the day before. Jinji announces his intention to attack House and Academy and asks the students of Suzuran High to lend him their powers, despite their refusal to join his group. He then stated that his father is currently in the hospital and tries to motivate the students of Suzuran High. Meanwhile, at the hospital, Kawashi, who had failed to kill Jinji's father, decided to finish the job by dressing up as one of the visitors and killing him. But then Ken appeared out of nowhere and abruptly stopped Kawashi. When Hideo's thugs arrived to execute Kawashi for his crimes, Ken begged them to forgive him. They ignored him and continued to beat Kawashi until Hideo came to his senses and told his henchmen to leave them alone. Hideo did this in exchange for Ken, who defied Joji Izaki's orders and chose to save Genji rather than kill him. To cut a long story short, Genji and his group members had planned a battle with Housen Academy for the following day. Surprisingly, the other Suzuran High School students are not interested in joining Genji's group and fighting Housen Academy. Because of their current strength, Izaki was pessimistic. It was impossible to defeat Housen Academy, which was about to launch a full-fledged assault. Genji disbanded the group, told them to go home, and promptly left them like a loser, realizing that none of this would work. However, Izaki, who didn't believe Genji would simply give up, warned the others to brace themselves for a fight against House and Academy. Genji, as Izaki had predicted, did not give up and went to the designated battle location. He was determined to confront House and Academy's delinquent students and solve the problem on his own. Taiga and his henchmen appear surprised that he arrived alone, but Genji claims that he alone will be enough to defeat them all. Genji then dashed forward, facing them all alone. Soon after, Izaki, Makiz, and members of Genji Perfect Seiya, as well as Serizawa and his group, arrived. They all decided to work together with the other Suzuran High students because losing the battle would be a disgrace to their reputation as Suzuran High students. When Jinji leads the Suzuran High School students into the House and Academy school building, the conflict between the schools escalates. Taiga, on the other hand, launched an all-out assault and managed to knock down the Suzuran High students with a single punch. Even the keys, the toughest of the Suzuran students, had to admit defeat to him. Meanwhile, Ryo is seen easily knocking down his opponents without using all of his strength. At the same time, Tokio, one of Genji's classmates who recently underwent brain surgery due to a cerebral aneurysm, decides to assist Genji in his fight against House and Academy, despite the fact that he has not fully recovered. Nonetheless, he used all of his strength to defeat his opponents. Genji and Serizawa then climb the stairs to the school building's roof, where they will meet Taiga. However, Ryo had already arrived and stated that only Genji could pass, whereas Serizawa had to face him first if he wanted to climb the stairs. Taiga was waiting for Genji on the roof of the building when he arrived and handed him a bottle of water before they began fighting. While Taiga and Genji fight on the school roof, Tokio and the students of Suzuran High work tirelessly to overthrow the House and Academy delinquents. After a long battle, they finally defeat House and Academy and demonstrate their complete invincibility. Serizawa and Ryo, on the other hand, are still engaged in a fierce battle, with Serizawa appearing to be overwhelmed by Ryo's all-out attack. Despite being beaten constantly by Ryo, Serizawa remained unmoved, as if he no longer felt anything when Ryo hit him, despite Ryo having maximized his strength. Ryo, who appears exhausted, is perplexed by Serizawa's physical endurance. Serizawa then informs him that fighting and martial arts are not the same thing. After that, he countered Ryo's attack and defeated him with one powerful punch. Serizawa climbs to the roof to observe the fight between Genji and Taiga. But, in the midst of the fight, Gaia appears, intending to cheat by stabbing Genji. Tatsuya then appears and saves Genji by directly beating Gaia. Taiga and Genji continued fighting until they both ran out of energy but tried to get back up and fight until the end. Finally, Genji overthrew Taiga, establishing himself as the strongest person and making Suzuran High School students proud of him.
Suzurin high school students were seen walking out of house and academy with a sense of accomplishment in their hearts after successfully winning the battle. A few months after the incident, Jinji and the others are preparing for graduation and will soon leave Suzurin high school with many fond memories. Jinji is seen challenging Rindamon and hoping to defeat him again before his graduation day. Jinji knocked Rindamon down and brought his knees in front of him, which he had never done before, which surprised Sarazawa and the others. Jinji's victory over Rindamon demonstrates that failure is not an excuse to give up. Failure allows that person to grow stronger than before, eventually defeating all those who stand in his way. Then the movie ends, 